Together we will fight, 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 and we will win, win, win. We're going to win, win, win. Never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America. Never again. And everyone who simply wants to do one thing, make America great again. The biggest election year in human history is just days away. The world is bracing for a consequential event the US presidential election 2024. However, it isn't just Americans who are waiting with bated breath for the November 5th elections. The entire world is anxious and is awaiting a high political drama. Will Donald Trump, an ex-POTUS who already painted a tumultuous picture in 2020, win a second term? Or will Kamala Harris, whose race started with Joe Biden's baggage, become America's first woman president? She hates Israel. She wouldn't even meet with Netanyahu when he went to Congress to make a very important speech. She refused to be there because she was at a sorority party of hers. If I were president, the Russia-Ukraine war would never have happened, never in a million years. But even now, if I were president, I'd be able to negotiate an end to this horrible and rapidly escalating war within 24 hours. Let us quote the New York Times. The world doesn't pick the U.S. president, but it will live with the consequences. Global leaders are worried about the unpredictable Trump, and his re-election is certain to make waves throughout the rest of the world. On which side of the bed will Americans wake up after elections is a question haunting at least two countries who are at war right now. The U.S. is already facing the heat of two big conflicts the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the Israel versus Hamas war. With an even conflict with Iran looking imminent, America's open-ended military engagements in Ukraine and Israel risk turning into a new wave of forever wars, which are also exceedingly expensive. Donald Trump has time and again framed both the missions as another war that could have been avoided with better US leadership. And so far, Kamala Harris, under Joe Biden's administration, has been unwilling to promise security guarantees that Ukraine seeks. As per many geopolitical pundits, right now, it is impossible to predict before the election what the successful candidate might do. Asia is witnessing a ripple effect from the confluence of domestic and global traumas. Amid the change of guards, Southeast Asian countries are getting ready to get on with both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. India, which is a very big abuser, uh, he happens to be coming to meet me next week. And Modi, he's a fantastic, I mean, fantastic man. These, a lot of these leaders are fantastic. You have to understand one thing. They're dealing, they're 100%. These people are the sharpest people. They're not a little bit backward. They're not, they are at the top. You know the expression, they're at the top of their game. New Delhi is appearing to be better placed with Trump 2.0. The ex-POTUS has a long history of positive chemistry with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. However, during Biden's time, there was some upbraiding of the Modi government on human rights issues. Despite this, the ever-evolving India-US relationship was handled by heavyweight Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Joe Biden himself. In August 2024, India's External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar firmly said that New Delhi will be able to work with any US president, whoever he or she will be. In terms of uh, uh, US elections, you know, uh, we generally don't comment on other people's elections because we also hope others don't comment on us. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, as I said, you know, look, uh, the American system will throw up its verdict and and, you know, I'm not saying this just as a formality, but if you look over the last 20, 20 odd years, maybe, maybe a little bit more, for us, we have every confidence that 
uh, we will be able to work with the President of the United States, whoever he or she will be. Expectations are low, but Beijing too is committed to improve ties with the US irrespective of whoever is elected president. Harris' trajectory on China is expected to remain the same, align with allies and compete against China. In September 2024, during the presidential debate, Harris argued that Trump sold us out to China. In her Democratic National Convention speech in August, Harris repeated her argument and said the US, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century. I will make sure that we lead the world into the future on space and artificial intelligence, that America, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century, and that we strengthen, not abdicate, our global leadership. Trump doesn't do nuance. Politico believes the West is heading for a showdown with Donald Trump on China. During an interview, Trump dropped a bombshell on the Dragon's Taiwan plan. He said, and I quote, if elected president next month, I would say, if you go into Taiwan, I'm sorry to do this, I'm going to tax you at 150% to 200%. He further added that, President she respects me and he knows I'm crazy. Reacting to Trump's warning, China implied that the United States has always pursued an America first policy. Old traumas and new problems. The Trump-NATO-EU dilemma has been an open secret. Over 228,000 US military personnel are stationed in foreign countries. The Biden administration and other NATO nations have given hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine as financial aid to fight Russia. Now, with Trump and Harris neck and neck contest, Europe is getting more worried about Trump's cozy ties with Putin. NATO was busted until I came along. I said, everybody's going to pay. They said, well, if we don't pay, are you still going to protect us? I said, absolutely not. They couldn't believe the answer. And one of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. And the money came flowing in. In stark contrast to Trump, who has been critical of NATO, Kamala Harris, as vice president, has firmly positioned herself as a strong supporter of multilateral cooperation. If Trump returns, he will reassess America's role in the transatlantic defense alliance. If Harris enters the White House, she says the US will focus on the greatest military alliance the world has ever known. Do watch, because it's not new. On the other hand, watch as Donald Trump has embraced Putin. Watch that. It's not just happening today. It's been happening. As he, Trump, threatened to abandon NATO and encouraged Putin to invade our allies, he even said Russia can, and I'm going to quote him now, and forgive the use of the word, but he, he said, quote, Russia can, quote, do whatever the hell they want. And he wants to be the President of the United States? And understand, as Trump bows down to dictators, he makes America weak. November 5, 2024 US elections unpredictability remains the only predictable thing right now. Whoever wins the White House, the coming years could be bumpy. Experts, media pundits have rested their case.